Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We thank God for His goodness and mercy, for His love and kindness, for blessing us to see a new year. And we wish everyone a happy new year, prosperous new year. Amen. We're praying that you grow in grace and in knowledge. Amen. In this coming year. Amen. We thank God for all things. Amen. God bless you, Sister Lashonda. Amen. I wasn't planning on coming on, but as I was up moving and getting ready, the Lord began to speak to me and just said, go on just a minute, just to deal with spiritual warfare a little bit. So we just want to share a few scriptures. Amen. Um, spiritual warfare, because um, it's getting more and more intense. And we have to know how to fight effectively, fight the enemy. Amen. So we want to just look at a few scriptures. We're not going to be on here too long. Amen. Um, but we just want to um, be obedient to the word of the Lord. Amen. So I just wanted to open up with this one scripture after we have this word of prayer. And then we'll open up. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your goodness and mercy. Lord, for your grace and truth, for blessing us to see another year. Lord, we pray that even as we open your word, you would open our hearts, cause us to hear what your spirit will say to us this day. We pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Uh, we'll be, I, I'm just really more um, sold out to the Lord in this year. And I just, whenever he give me to come on, I'm, I'm beyond as he leads me. But I want to um, open up with this scripture that came to me. It says, Proverbs 25 and 11, a word fitly spoken or spoken in due season is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. As an earring of gold and an ornament of fine gold, so as a wise reprover upon an obedient ear. And that's an awesome picture drawn to us. Just think about that. Apples of gold in pictures of silver. That's an awesome sight right there. And he said that's how a word fitly spoken or spoken in season is. Amen. <clears throat> and so... Um, we're just trying to this year speak words fitly, prepared words, words that the Lord give us to speak at the right time. Amen. So let's get to the word. The first place we want to go is Ephesians chapter 6. Amen. We want to read that, but then also we're going to be looking in, in Matthews also. We're going to look at Jesus, who is our example. When he was faced um, with the enemy, warfare, how he dealt with it. Because how he dealt with it is how we need to deal with it. Amen. So let's go to uh, Ephesians chapter 6. And let's begin reading at the 10th verse. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Strong in the spirit and in the power of his might. Not our might, but his might. Amen. His strength. Okay. Now, here it is. Verse 11. Put on the whole or the complete armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles or the tricks of the devil because that's how he gets us through his tricks he doesn't have more power than we have because the bible said great is he that is in us than he that is in the world he didn't have more power than um, adam and eve he deceived them into relinquishing their power into not um standing in their power amen standing in the word of God. If they would have stood on what God had told them to do, they would have never partaken of that fruit. And we wouldn't be in the state that we're in. Amen. 
So understand that you have been given more power than your enemy, power over your enemy. Behold, I give you power over all the works of the devil. And nothing shall by any means harm you, but you have to stand in that authority that he has given you through his word. And that is um, our, our secret weapon. Amen. The word of God. So he says, take on the whole armor that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So understanding that your enemy is not physical. Amen. That gives you an advantage. When you're looking at your, at your enemy as being physical, you're at a disadvantage. And so that's what we want to um, fully understand, not just have it in our heads, but in our hearts. Amen. Because sometimes we have it in our heads, but it's not really in our heart because we are still fighting on a carnal level. Amen. But our enemy is spiritual. Therefore, the only way to defeat a spiritual enemy is being spiritual yourself. Whenever you walk in the flesh, he automatically has power over you. Amen. Because the Bible said that the angels are stronger in power and might than men. Amen. But when you get in the spirit, and that's what Jesus did for us, he brought us into the spiritual realm in order that we might have power over the enemy. We're not equal to him at this point. When you abide in Christ and his word abide in you, you are superior to him. Amen. And don't let him deceive you and make you think, amen, that you are superior. But you have to know where your superiority comes from. And it comes from what? The word of God. Amen. So look what he says. Put on the whole arm of God because we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. Okay. It's just the same thing what we was talking about in Bible study, that if you're trying to keep the spiritual law in the flesh, it, it won't work. So if you're trying to fight a spiritual battle in the flesh, likewise, it won't work. Verse 13, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And that's the day that we're living in. And having done all to stand. Now that's important that we understand because he said having done all. The reason why often we can't stand is because we don't do everything God tells us to do. Amen. You have to do all if you're going to stand. Amen. Everything he says. And that's where we get power over our enemy. Amen. And as I always say, it is a, something we grow into, but we must grow into it. Amen. That we might have victory. Like I said, we, uh, we ended strong last year, but we're starting stronger. <laughs> Man, we're beginning this year stronger. I know I did. I woke up in the Word this morning and, and uh, with that mindset. And I got in the Word and that scripture in, um, uh, where is that? In Philippians, where it's talking about... Um, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Amen. And that's where I'm, I'm, I'm at. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now I'm, I'm just more surrendering my life to him. Amen. And understanding my existence. It's all about him. Amen. Christ is our life. And when we understand that, then we can get um, delivered from the, the base of things of this life. Okay? So, having done all to stand, stand. Look at verse 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Talking about the loins of our mind. Because the only weapon, and I want to reiterate that, the only weapon the devil has against you is deceit, is the lie. Amen. But when you know the truth and you stand in the truth, because it's one thing to know the truth, it's another thing to stand in the truth. Amen. 
And so we can't just know it. We got to stand firm in it. Amen. And don't let the devil move you. And don't let nobody he's in move you. Because <laughs> anybody trying to move you off the truth is of the devil. Amen. So you have to stand in the truth. Because we have more power than he had. So stand therefore, having your, lo the lo your loins girded about with truth. Amen. The loins of your mind. Gird them with the truth. Amen. Memorize scripture. Amen. Get it in your head. Because the Bible said when the enemy comes, and we're going to see this when Jesus does his fighting, we're going to see how he got the victory. Amen. And so you got to memorize the word of God. And sometimes just reading the word and continually reading the word, that word get in your spirit and you be quoting scripture and you ain't purposely memorized it, but you, you've gotten in it so much, now it's in you. <laughs> I never forget when I first got saved, well, I was in the word of God all the time. I wasn't purposely even trying to memorize it, but because I was in it all the time, it was getting in me, and I never act, I never forget, because I would quote chapter, verse, and book. And my father asked me once, he said, well, how do you train for that? How do you? And I said, well, I really don't have a, a specific way to do it. I just stay in the word. Amen. And so um, that's what we have to learn to do because when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the, of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. And that standard is the word. And again, we're going to see this. Okay. Look what he says, having your loins girded about with truth, the loins of your mind girded about with truth, memorizing the scripture, amen, and having on the blessed breastplate of righteousness, and that is the righteousness of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we get that through prayer. He imparts righteousness in us, amen. Verse 15, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, now, look what it says, verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, or the, the um, fiery words, or the venomous words that people, the enemy used people to shoot at you. Go with me briefly to Psalms 140, and we'll see just what he's talking about, the fiery darts of the wicked. Amen. And um, Psalms 140, I begin at verse 1. It says, Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man, which imagine mischiefs in their heart. Continually they are gathered together for war. Got to understand that. Amen. Look at verse 3, though. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Amen. They've sharpened their tongue. Amen. So you have to guard yourself against what people are saying. Amen. With the truth. They sharpen their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips. That's what he's talking All the venomous words, the poisonous words. That's what he's talking about. Having the shield of faith is to protect yourself from the poisonous, venomous words of the enemy. Amen. Let me read that one more time. Verse 3. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips. Amen. And say the law. Stop and think about that. Amen. So let's go back to uh, Ephesians and read that again with that understanding. Verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith he shall be able to quench or put out all the fiery darts of the wicked. Amen. You have to always be aware of the words that are being um, coming your way. Amen. And, and have that shield of faith so that that dart don't get in you. Because here's, here's the thing. It's not the... Um, the word that kills, just like the dark itself, is not the dark that kills. The dark can hurt you, but the dark won't kill you. 
It's the poison that's that they roll that dart in, amen. In the in the jungles, the the um, people when they would hunt the monkeys or whatever, they would um, make some poison, put it on the end of the dart, and then they would shoot that dart at the monkey. The dart, the monkey pulled the dart out and throw it away, but the part problem is the poison is still in that monkey and it's killing him or whatever they're shooting it at. And that's what happens. And that's why, you know, that old saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words may never hurt me. That's not true. Words can kill you. <laughs> Amen. Long after you um, walked away from the source of the word, that venom that is left in it. Amen. He's, and Paul, no, not Paul, but James talks about that in James. But, but that's what this is talking about. Amen. Know the truth. Know who you are. Because if you don't know who you are, then people can tell you. Amen. And you'll buy into what they're saying about you rather than what God has said. Amen. Verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is what? The Word of God. But the thing that you notice about all these weapons of war they all have to do with one thing, and that is God's word. So when you sum it up, putting on the whole armor is putting on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what it means. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And, not, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. So that's so important. But we don't want to skip verse 18 because this is also a part of being dressed um, for war, spiritual warfare, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So we can't forget you put on that war, you put on that word, but then you also pray. Now, that's what we always talk about, but prayer and the study of God's word. That's what's going to give you the victory. Amen. And so now what we want to do is we want to go to uh, Matthew's. Matthew chapter 4. Because we're going to see how this looks. Amen. Because Jesus is our example. And if we do what he did, we're going to have what he had. And that is victory over the devil. Amen. We become very proficient at spiritual warfare. Um, look at what he said. Okay, verse 4. Then was Jesus led of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil or to be tried of the devil. And you'll be led into situations to try you, to tempt you. Amen. To see where you are. In the Lord. So you have to understand. He was led of the spirit into the wilderness. For the purpose of being tempted of the devil. Amen. Verse 2. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. He was afterwards a hunger. So the enemy came to him in his physically weakened state. But he was spiritually strong. <laughs> Amen. And that's how we want the enemy to find us. We might be physically weak, but we want to be spiritually strong. And the Bible said the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, his weakness, but a wounded spirit, who can bear it? So we want to make sure we are stronger in our spirit than we are in our flesh. Amen. Because I've been in situations where um, uh, well, a saint was physically impaired and I went to call myself and encourage them and they ended up encouraging me because their spirit was strong. They seen things from a spiritual perspective. Amen. And so they didn't get depressed. Amen. The enemy, he going to use words against you. It's a battle of words and we've got to get that understanding. But you got to have a word for him. Now, I want us to see what happened um, how Jesus dealt with the enemy, so we'll know how to deal with him. Look at verse 3. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. So he tried to um, get Jesus 
to question who he was. He, he was really also playing on that um, um, pride of life. If you the son of God, prove it. Amen. But Jesus knew who he was. He didn't have to prove it to nobody. Just like us. You got to know who you are and you ain't got to prove it to nobody. Amen. You just live the life and they'll know. Amen. But that's what Jesus, the devil was trying to get him um, out of character. So I want us to see the enemy came at him with a what? Word. So how did Jesus come back at the enemy? Verse 4. But he answered and said, it is written. You know why he was able to say that? Because he had the loins of his mind girded about with the truth. Amen. He had gotten in the word, gotten that word in him. So when it came time to be tempted, the Holy Ghost had something to work with. Amen. Sometimes we don't give the Holy Ghost nothing to work with. We give the devil a lot to work with. We watch all his movies and we listen to all his music. But we don't get God much to work with at all. <laughs> you got to get in the word so that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit will have a word. Uh, and, and I give this example. One time I was in this situation and um, I didn't know what to do. But I was just praying and asking God and waiting on God. And then all of a sudden, a scripture that I had read, but I had memorized it. But the Spirit just brought it up in my spirit. And it was the exact word that I needed to be able to discern, discern that situation and make the right choice. So you never worry about um, uh, understanding it. Just get the word in there. Get in God's word in and ask him to give you a hunger and a thirst because the enemy is going to come. Amen. The tempter is going to come. Amen. But you you got to be ready for him. Take on the whole arm. Remember what we said? Having done all to stand. Jesus was able to stand in this situation. Why? Because he had done all to stand. Amen. So he said, but he answered and said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So the enemy came at him with his sword. But what did Jesus do? He came right back at him with his sword. And the Bible talks about the sword proceeded out of his mouth, a sharp two-edged sword. And we got a sharp two-edged sword. Well, our sword should be sharp. Hopefully it's sharp. If it's not, you need to get it sharpened up. <laughs> But you have a sword in your mouth, and that's the word of God. That's what we learn. The sword of the spirit, which is what? The word of the Lord. That's the sword. Amen. So make sure your sword is sharp. And so what did the devil have to do? He couldn't do nothing with that. Amen. The truth. So look at verse 5. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. And he said unto him, if thou be, see, he questioning and trying to get Jesus to question who he was, trying to provoke him to, um, you know, or, oh, you don't think I'm the son of God? Watch this. Bam. And he didn't do that. Amen. Because he knew what the devil was up to. And he knew who he was. Amen. And so he said, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written. You see what the devil just did? He tried to use the word of God against Christ. Amen. But he was using it in the wrong way. So sometime your enemy going to come and they're going to use the word. But you have to um, have a word for them. You have to see their subtlety, their trickery. And that's what he said. Put on the whole armor so you can stand against the wiles of the tricks, the cunning craftiness of the devil. Amen. He said, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hand they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. But how did Jesus answer him? Did he just say, um, Satan, the Lord rebuke you? No, there's a time for that. But this wasn't it. Amen. You got to know, and the Spirit of God will give you the wisdom in warfare. But what did Jesus do? Again, 
And Jesus said unto him, it is written. Got to know what's written. Amen. Again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So Jesus, by the Spirit, discerned what the devil was trying to do. Amen. Trying to get him to tempt God. But he knew the word. Amen. One of the things that I, I'm striving to do at the Lord's house of prayer is make us word literate. Amen. Too many of the saints of God, we know about sports, we know about this, we know about that, but we know way too little about the word. And we wonder why when we get in a scrimmage with the enemy, we more than um, too often we lose the battle because we don't know the word. But he knows it. <laughs> don't fool yourself. He know the word. So we got to know the word. Okay, so what did Jesus do? Because this is how we have to come back at the enemy. Jesus said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So what happened again? Round two, Jesus is the victor. Amen. So far, round one, he got the victory. Round two, he got the victory. But it did, did it stop the devil from coming? No, 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 no. He he, he wasn't through yet. He got one more round to go. Now watch this. Verse, verse 8. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain. See, he's going from one level to the next. Trying to get Jesus, what? To fall. Amen. Again, because I want you to see this too. Because as he was, every, every, every temptation he overcame, took him to another level. <laughs> Amen. And so that's how it is. When you get the victory over the devil, then you go to another level. Amen. But you have to stay alert. So again, the devil taketh them up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Amen. And in the other uh, instance, uh, uh, the other gospel where this is um, talked about, the devil says, for all these things are given unto me. And some people say, well, they, they weren't. Well, he usurped man's authority. So he is the God of this world. Man is supposed to be, but the devil is because Adam and Eve failed. But thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, we've been given the victory back. And that's what we're waiting. That's what we're looking. When he comes again, we're going to once again be put in our rightful place over this earth. Amen. The meek shall inherit the earth. Okay. And so... He wanted to get him to worship, and, and he's still doing this today. He'll promise you this, he'll promise you that, but the cost of it is you're going to have to fall down and worship him. Amen. And the Bible says the whole world is going to worship him. Amen. And you have a lot of preachers that are falling down. Why? Because he promised them money. He promised them fame. He promised them churches, and they... Um, fell down and worshipped him. They they bought it. But you know why? Because they had not girded the loins of their mind with the truth. Amen. And so um, he got them looking at the fine cars and the house and all of that. And they wanted it. Amen. And so what happened? Do he give it to them? Oh yeah, but it's going to cost them their salvation. And so Look what Jesus did. Again, remember what we said. This is a battle of words. You, and, and you always have to be discerning who's speaking to you. Amen. Who's telling you. Because um, and sometimes the devil will tell you, oh, you're so lonely. You're all by yourself. And you got to tell that devil, um, um, God is with me. Amen. <laughs> I might be lonely, but I'm not alone. Amen. And he, he promised to be with me and to comfort me 
Because let me tell you something that the Lord was showing to me. Sometimes he puts us in a place where we are by ourselves in order for us to get closer to him. Because sometimes we have too much dependence on people. And God wants to develop a close relationship with you. And the closer you get to him, those feelings of loneliness, amen, will begin to subside and go away. Amen. And, and then you, you get so caught up in him, sometimes you don't want to be around folk because sometimes being around folk, you're around too much foolishness. <laughs> amen. But don't let the devil... Don't let the devil talk to you no way, no how, because he's always trying to get you out of Christ, get you away from the word so he can destroy you. Amen. So you got to know the word. So listen what Jesus said. Verse 10. Then said Jesus unto him, get thee hence. Okay, in other words, okay, I've had enough. It's, it's time to go. Get thee hence, Satan. Why? For it is written. But you see, he kept telling them what? What's written? You got to know, saints, what's written. Sometimes the enemy will come to me with crazy thoughts. And I have to confess, some of them, I gave them the ammunition because I got watched things I shouldn't watch, listen to things I shouldn't listen to. And then he later comes and uses it against me. But... When that happened, I, I, I stand up. I say, okay, that was my fault. Yeah, I gave you the ammunition, but I'm not falling for that no more. And I tell them what the word of God says. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty to, through God to the pulling down of strongholds and casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought unto the obedience of Christ. So I use that word and I get the victory over him. I let him know. You might have got me that time, but not this time. Amen. We're going to stand in the word. Amen. And so that's what you have to know. It is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. See? Because a lot of people are falling down and worshiping the enemy. And, and before it's all over, the Bible says that the uh, Antichrist, they're going to make an image to the beast. And everybody's going to fall down and worship him. If your name ain't in the Lamb's Book of Life, amen, you're going to fall down and worship him. Amen. So it's important that we know how to fight this good fight of faith. You don't fight it. With your own philosophy, you fight it with the word of God, with that sword that is in your mouth, just like Jesus. Because when he comes back in Revelations, the 19th chapter, he said he's going to destroy his enemy with that, that two-edged sword that proceeds out of his mouth. Amen. And you have a two-edged sword in your mouth. Get it sharpened so that you'll be prepared for the enemy. Now, I want you to see this last verse. Now, okay, that was round one. You're going to have to get out when it's Jesus. Round two, you're going to have to get at the Jesus. Round three, you're going to have to get at the Jesus. Amen. Because he won all three rounds unanimously. <laughs> and you can do the same thing too. Amen. But you're going to have to do what he did. You're going to have to get in that word and... Get ready for the battle. Train for the battle. You can't go in the battle all fat and out of shape and sloppy and you ain't prepared. No, you're going to get beat by the devil every time. Amen. You're going to have to get up and run the run them laps around the, the word of God in prayer. And seeking God. Exercising yourself. Preparing yourself for this battle. Amen. But look what happens in verse 11. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. When he got the victory, the devil had to leave, and the angels came and ministered grace to him. I want to look at uh, Luke, which is the companion to this, because 
it says something that I want to point out here. Luke chapter 4. And um, verse 13. Okay. After he had gotten the victory. But I want you to notice this because this is very important. Verse 13. And when the devil had ended all the temptations, he departed from him for a season. Amen. It wasn't nothing. He, he wasn't gone forever. He had just been whooped that time. Amen. But he departed for a season to go what? Um, uh, regroup. In other words, I'll, I'll be back. <laughs> and, and that's what happens in our life. Amen. Uh, Cece sing this song. She said uh, about don't you um, and when you go to talking about the devil, when you go, please stay away. And I'm like, the devil ain't going to stay away. He's going to leave for a season. And then he's going to come back probably stronger than when he left. Amen. You and, and that's the way it is in this life. That's why you understand when when you get a reprieve, that is not a time to just kick back and relax. That's a time while he's away getting um, regrouping, you need to be regrouping. Understand, okay, he's coming back. Let me reload. <laughs> Amen. And so we thank God for his word on today. The Lord, they just put that on my heart. Amen. And like I said, as the Lord lead me, guide me, I'll be coming on for just for in, encourage us and let us know we have the victory. Amen. But we got to walk in it. Amen. But um, the word is like apples of gold and what? Pictures of silver. Amen. And so we thank God the word fitly spoken. And so that's why we are seeking to just follow the leading of the Lord. So we thank God for you on today again. Amen. Happy New Year's. Hopefully we'll see you in the morning. We are going to be at the church in the morning. Amen. We're going to um, um, go and wipe it down and whatnot. And then we'll, we, we'll, we will be there, though, in the morning for those who desire to come. So God bless you. Have an awesome um, day. Amen. And remember, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. God bless you.